I'm Katie. Some people call me Cuddle Bunny as well. (laughs) I'm built for it. (laughs) Is my topic morbid? No. No, it isn't. Don't switch off because there's... It started with humour, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. In February, I was with a group at a meeting with 50 oldies. That could seem depressing, but it was okay. (laughs) I stood up and I said that I would be very pleased to start a club for us all to make our own coffins. You could hear a nail drop. (laughs) Where did the thought come from? Was it lurking in my being? Was it anything to do with my, my, what I'd been doing all my life? I was a nurse midwife. I went through various other healthcare disciplines and finally ended up as a palliative care nurse As a hospice nurse, well, that was a pretty natural, normal life progression. So it must have influenced me in some way. Perhaps God works in mysterious ways. Perhaps he he saw in me that my passion was people, that that was what I was meant to do, that was my vocation, that was how I had to get on with life, and I did. Let it happen, and it jolly well did. No one has left the building, and we've generated a Mexican wave around New Zealand and actually around the world. I'm not a carpenter, but I could see it was pretty important, so I gathered these old blokes with building skills and old ladies who had creativity skills, and the main thing was their old-fashioned way of pleasing the men folk. They fed them, (laughs) and they gave them compliments. (laughs) We We sorted out the legalities and rules because, you know, that was pretty important. And we started building coffins. My car was banished out to the road because my garage and my carport were where we were going to do it. All these people came and off we went. And this was the first coffin club in New Zealand. I can't believe really how we've grown. It's been incredible. We soon grew grew so much that we ran out of room, you can imagine. Later, we were gifted by very, very kind people. We were gifted a special facility that we could use, and from there on, we grew even more. Now I'd like to tell you some, a few stories, because we're full of stories, really. A mortician from a big New Zealand hospital, she got in touch with me. She did autopsies for research purposes on babies that had not got to birth. An incredible job. Her worry was that she had no receptacles appropriate for handing back these little babes to their so brave and grieving parents. It was a problem for her. We sorted it. We made 16 little caskets, just like you see on the, on the slide, and we hand-delivered them to this hospital, and 
It changed their life down there. I've got a letter that I'd like to read from her. Um, this touched us very, very intensely. Good morning, Katie. I'm not quite sure how to express how grateful we are on behalf of the families who have already received the most generous gift of one of your caskets. Both of the families were humbled to know that someone cared enough about them to have provided such a beautiful, beautiful gift at a time when they were devastated. Both families had a tragic loss of a child and your gift meant the world to them. Not only the casket themselves, but the beautiful trimmings inside and out. And they are special. The little teddy bear inside was going to be a treasure for one particular family which would connect them to the child they had lost forever. Can you please express to your team just how much their gifts have meant to others? Our very best wishes on behalf of those who can't speak for themselves. Pretty powerful. The next story I'm going to tell you is uh, about a chap who rang me. <laughs> he rang up and he said, can, I, can you come and see me? So, sure thing, sure thing. I went and he, had, he was having palliative care for a very brave, brave journey he'd made to regain his health. He hadn't made, made it. He was quite close to going. What do you want? I said to him, I never had a go-kart when I was a kid. <laughs> uh oh a go-kart, yeah, fine. So after talking about it and making sure of all the things he wanted, off I went. We talked about it at the club, and before we were much older, there was a go-kart for him. He said to me, I want my, my very special racing numbers on three aspects of it. I love camouflage. I want a camouflage top. He said, I want wooden wheels. And then he nearly ruined me because he said, I don't want pram wheels. <laughs> the thing had gone through my mind, pram wheels. <laughs> so, okay, we had to make wheels. We had to make wheels. We did with the silver thing and the black tyres. He also had a painted num number plate with his pet name on it, a silver grill. And at the top because he wanted a steering wheel and a cushion, they had to go on Velcro because we had to put them down or he wouldn't have fitted in the cremator. <laughs> All this was shared with him and he died quite soon after that, but he went off in magical style, believe me. The third story I want to tell you is about family involvement. One of the problems is getting your family to say, it's okay, mum or dad or whoever, it's okay to make your own coffin. They say, oh, you can't die, mum or dad. And of course you jolly well got to. So family involvement is, is a treasure to us. The picture on the, the right hand shows Poppy. Her grandma, her, sorry, her nana Vegas was wanting to make her coffin and Poppy, this little girl, her, her, her granddy, helped to paste all these photos all over it. They were photos of pets that Nanny Vegas had had through a long and special life. 
Poppy just loved doing this, and this shows her proudly in front of the coffin with her Nana Vegas bus beside her and, and Nana's friend. The one on the left, Grandma bought him, and he, sweet boy, and he said, oh, I'm going to stay here till my friend's mother comes and gets me because I've got to go and play with him. Fine, fine. I want to paint, he said. What about a brush or a roller? I can use both, says the six-year-old. Totally, totally with it. So we gave him both and a pot of paint. You can see in the photo, off he went, happily rollering at that time. Wonderful. After a little while, he went to Nan Grandma and said, Grandma, I don't want to go and play with my friend. I can do that any old day. I want to stay here and paint. So he did. He had morning tea and lunch break with the old guys and he had a great time and off he went, this beautiful, giving little boy at the end of the session. Now a whole community of us that make these special things happen with stories like this. Thanks. I'm not finished. <laughs> I had problems with that little clicky thing, so he's doing it over there. <laughs> so if I say thanks, it's him. <laughs> the Coffin Club grew like Topsy. After all this, we had more overseas communication. CNN, BBC, National Geographic, even Ripley, believe it or not. Okay, there was documentaries, there was podcasts, there was all these things. We had visits from China, Japan, the Netherlands, France, Germany, USA. Over 50 countries were in touch with us. I've had phone calls from all over the place. I'm an older lady, as you can see, and I could go on and on forever, but I better not. There's some take-home things that I'd like you to think about because you've got a part in all this in actual fact. So the take-home things, we are who we are because of our unique life our achievements and our memories. Death comes and should be celebrated for the life that has been lived. The importance of being in a group of like-minded people and the ability to discuss anything you want with openness. But probably the most important one is that Every living person deserves a loving touch. Lots and lots of oldies these days are socially deprived. Their families are away somewhere. They, their friends, they've got friends, but they're not cuddly sort of people. So what I want you to take home really and truly is if you've got any friends, any family, any neighbours that you think do not get a loving touch, there you go. You all can make a huge difference to this in our world. Thank you. Thank you.